the one who opened up the door for it to come through yeah so that's how you get the um astral impression of the 3d to manifest in the 3d using the agency of man and mind mm. yeah. i don't know what that means but I, I hear you so they're saying that the spirit in the 3d used people to bring stuff into the 3d that was developed in the 5d now we're going in the 5d consciousness in the 3d realm we still going to be in the 3d realm but we're going to have fifth dimensional consciousness which is like having your personal tutor once you understand how to read your higher self then you purify the ego which allows you to know your highest good can be expressed easiest than your worst wickedness okay I hear that. I hear yeah. that. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, uh, you said YouTube and look up self talk, and then do a breathing, do the breathing methods that singers do. Yeah, and that'll help me out. Yeah, and don't forget the CRV control remote viewing manual. So, I hope you gonna say this live, right? Yeah, I'm gonna say. Okay, because I don't got no. Pants, you should see how be something. Play it back and get it out. Yeah. All right. I think that's everything. Um. Yeah. It's me. I'm gonna let you go and bring somebody else up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by to see me. Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, little goddess. Let's talk about some good what the loyal goddess is talking about. What do y'all want to know? Well, hello there. Hey, Mr. Hayes. I don't know how to if I don't know how to take this thing off from anywho, I'm just gonna go. So um I've been following you for a while. I'm surprised to see you on live again. You don't really hardly be on here no more. <laughs> well, I don't be on here no more. I don't know. I have on my on my sick eight page and um I've been um in Instagram jail over there for a while now and they won't let me on, so I came over here to do the Q and A off the Facebook video I did last night. Okay, okay. I'm not on Facebook. So I've been going through, um, maybe you could just like, I want to know more. I know you're very, you know, intelligent in this part. Um, on August 5th, I had a child that, um, that left um, my 17 year old. Um, it was due to the police. Um, and I know know about life i know we're guaranteed to live you know to not be here um 10 years ago my brother you know uh, transitioned also um, um I, I just not so much closer but i want to know like how i really I don't know what i want to ask you but i just want your your guidance i suppose you know, um, Dealing with the um, I speak to him through readings. I do read cards. I speak to him through readings. At first, he was really um, the first week or so. He was really, you know, distraught and like has he didn't know what was going on. So I had to guide him. Um, so he's, he's doing better now. He's talking to me. He's throwing out, you know, better cards and kind of like guiding me. But I don't. I'm really kind of like lost right now. I need to put myself back up. <laughs> okay, the first thing you need to know before you know anything else is you grieve according to your own time. Can't nobody tell you to get past it or get over it or none of that. Just because you grieve how long or how hard you grieve. But allow you 
give yourself the opportunity to grieve even if you have to go into solitude in order to gain your senses back. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is this. You need to do spiritual baths during the time of difficulty to allow you to relax the stress on the spirit so you will be stronger to endure the process of the grief. The prescription for the spiritual bath is hot as you can stand it and put you about a cup and a half of Epsom salt in there and you can pick your own essential oil according to how uh, what the power is to the oil or what the character of the oil does. And then you take you a cup of alcohol, but you do not put the alcohol in the bath water until you submerge, because that's going to wash your aura. Okay. Right. It's going to also make your um, connection to your ancestors on the other side clearer. Okay. And your son is in the ancestral realm. And you will be able to have ancestors counsel him because when they we recently cross over, it's the same trauma that they that we feel in or grief we feel in, they feel in grief too. And they need the ancestors that's already over there to assist them. But if he don't know how to ask for the help, they don't volunteer. And you can teach him how to ask for the help. Once you clarify your connection to the realm, you can ask them as his mother, you can ask the ancestors that's there to aid him in his transition. And you will find that when they start to answer your call to aid him, your grief in the 3D realm will start to subside faster. And once you feel that the ancestor that you needed him to connect with the most connect, it's going to be an acceptance that comes with that in the cycles of grief that's going to allow you to breathe. Okay. So that brings us to what I just told the sister before you about the science of breath. Breathe like a singer. Because when you grieve and you breathe shallow. Yeah. And it makes the grief last longer because you can't get full breath which is yeah. getting full the spirit is breath yeah i do that because when i'm crying it's like you know it, it goes it goes like that and it's yeah. like breathing through the mouth and i know breathing through the mouth is not good you gotta breathe in through your nose and let it go out through your mouth so i've been you know i've been practicing you know the breathing um also too but i do catch myself when I'm like hysterically crying that it's like, you know, I guess trying to catch my breath type thing. Most, Cause it'll relax the body enough for you to catch your breath. You said what now? That's when those baths work the best because the it'll allow the body to relax. Okay. It'll allow you to catch your breath during the episode. Okay. But remember, Every time you go through a physical breakdown, you're making a spiritual breakthrough. If you don't know that, it'll make the grief harsher and longer. Okay. But when you know that, you can monitor your success in overcoming the process of grief. Okay, kind of like flip the energy around. No? You don't have to. All you got to do it's, it comes with the, when you get to the phase of acceptance, that's when you start to wreck and it's going to change you on a spiritual level and make you more useful to other people once you get done going through your process. Okay. But you have to go through your own process because this is the greatest catalyst to growth is great loss. Yeah. And that's why you go through the period of grief. It's the yeah. phoenix consuming itself in the fire to become ashes. And then 
and rises from his own ashes in order to be the greatest phoenix it had ever been. And they do that every time it falls in its own ashes is greater than it was before. Okay. Um, I do grow a lot of herbs. I have like rue and rosemary. Can I, I could use those and parsley and all that. I could use those for my bath instead of essential oils, right? You absolutely can. There's a book um, on Amazon you can get called, I think it's called 105 Spiritual Baths, uh -huh. but it tells you many different types of spiritual baths you can um, do so you don't just stuck to one. But the basic root ingredient is the hot water and the Epsom salt and the alcohol only after you've um, been submerged. Okay, so um, something like rum, um, would that be best? You could, rum? Rum. you could use rum. Depend on your spiritual practice because a lot of the women from the Louisiana area, they use the rum, they use white lightning, what's moonshine? Uh -huh. And they use uh, um, Johnny Walker red, Johnny Walker black, uh, old granddad. So depending on your preference, those alcohols are acceptable. But they to wash the alcohol itself is to wash the aura. Okay. Okay. So do that after I take the after I submerge in the bath. I'll, I'll go ahead and put that in. Has I'm has I'm submerging in the bath. No. Nope. I used to. Once you under the submerged, the majority of your body submerged, then you pour the alcohol in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my grandmother, she's also gone, but she's like that Johnny Walker. So I could either use that or the rum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you use that kind of alcohol, you can use a single shot from a shot glass. If I use the Johnny Walker. Many shots series, yep. When you use that, you measure with the shot glass. Okay. And um, okay. you can use one shot glass up to like 10, depending on how much energy you think that you need to cleanse what you're going through. You will feel it. And the more you use spiritual baths, it's like learning a new skill. You will know what you need in order to help you recover from whatever you're going through. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you if you know if you could um help me in any way like this. I mean, I'm pretty okay with, you know, what death and whatnot, but you know, it's like being your own child, you know, it hits a it hits a little different, you know. I know that we are born here to leave, you know, and I know the pain or whatnot, but I'm not gonna take too much of your time. I guess like I said, I'm gonna do the spiritual bath now. He said what? Your son, your son, if he's coming back anytime soon, he's going to tell you who he's coming back through as their child. So when he come, he would want you to be there to greet him. If I tell you ahead of time, you'll pay attention to the signs he gives you. As far as him coming back? Yeah. He will be able to tell him. He'll tell traumatically like that. They turn around and come right back. Okay. Let me ask you this, because one of my other children, um, he's a he's a male. Um, he, he's expecting, well, you know, the girl is expecting. And the first thing, too, like I noticed, I'm like, well, is this Thailand already coming back? Or does it take longer for that? When you first ask that question, why did you ask it? What was your intuition telling you that made you ask yourself that question? Well, you I just, I just, I felt, I kind of felt that, that, like, you know, when that happened, when the same day that that happened, it was like a light bulb. It was like, fuck, that's probably Thailand coming back. That's the baby that's coming in. Is probably Thailand. Not a, is I, that brother his brother? Huh? Is the brother that's having the baby his favorite brother? Because we always come back through our favorite, the one we love the most. No, his, 
it's actually they actually bump heads a lot <laughs> to tell you the truth you know so part of the love relationship that they have yeah 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 actually they actually always was like he always used to he's old the the one that's having the baby he's actually older than him but it seemed like Thailand the one that you know that's no longer with the transition he was more mature than him and um and um and um what was i say i lost my train of thought but um yeah it just seemed i don't know that's that's what came that's what came like that same day it was just like and i never you know it was just like that that same day i was like wow i said that's that must be that must be the baby i'm gonna give you a little that'll you help you understand breaking. the can you hear me i can hear you now but keep kind of like going off and on but go ahead so um in your bloodstream your son cells are still there from the gestation period. They with you okay. your whole life. Okay. And when your cells are in distress, your children's cells come to the aid. Okay. Right? You have a heart link connection with them that came from him being in your uterus. Right. So now that's two connections. He's in your blood. And he's in your heart. Okay. You also have a, a telepathic mental connection because it's easy for you to see his face when you close his your eyes. Yes. Every day, every single minute, more now than ever. That's the visual connection, which is the mental link. Mm -hmm. you have a three link connection to always communicate with any one of your children. Is once you know that, you will know if he's coming back, just like when you suddenly realize, oh, I'm pregnant. You will suddenly realize, that, oh, my son just came back. Mm. It's the same, same frequency. Because it's the same connection that you had when you brought him into the world, that he's coming back. Okay. We all come back trauma normally makes us come back faster because normally the trauma like um sudden deaths are interrupting our path and we got work to finish so we come back to continue the process of breaking that generational curse that we came to work on which may be the primary and root cause of the trauma yeah. so now i'm gonna come back right because my favorite brother gonna make sure because he know how i move mm -hmm. so if he what he teach me with what i already am i can't miss this time my confidence is in my brother who shared the same womb as my mother mm -hmm. as i did mm -hmm. so now when i come back he already know my temperament mm -hmm. and my mom, grandmama me mm -hmm. and spoil me. So now I'm getting the double juicy benefit from the turnaround come right back. Mm -hmm. Mama, know, even though I'm my grandbaby this time, that I'm still her baby. It's going to be instinctual because of the connection that you have to your child, you can follow them through lifetime. My mama talk, talk to me all the time, like I'm talking yep. to you, but I can't tell people that they think you crazy. Yeah. But she'd be on the other side, she'd be coaching me. Yeah. Now baby, don't say nothing, just listen. <laughs> okay, time to talk. Yeah. So Quiet to yesterday, cause she told me, okay, now it's time to talk. Tell them to wrap this shit up. It's time to bring it on home now, right? right? And the mission is to help as many people as I possibly can. I could have helped more if they didn't think I yeah. was crazy. Yeah. 
So you right. say crying and and that's kind of that it, me being hurt as I am and just keep letting it, you know, I don't try to let it bring me down. I try to keep up. I feel like me crying or being so hurt about it will kind of like hold him down. No, Maybe. it will hold like well, like will delay his. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like me, you know, you no. Know, it's... Grief is yours. Okay. He got his own grief from crossing over suddenly. Okay. Now you have to, when you go through the process of resolving your grief, mm -hmm. the break is the breakthrough at the layers of the grief. Okay. So when the when you letting the grief out and you let the tears flow and you can get in that high water and relax and allow yourself to breathe, you cycle the energy better. Okay. Which allows you to recover from the grief faster, which allows him on the other side to have your spiritual guidance as if he was here with you. But he over there needing your guidance from a different direction. Okay. You telepathically to him. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I have enough of his. Yeah, once you control of your faculties, you go from the grief and you start going through the process and you start doing what you got to do. That's called putting in spiritual okay. work. Okay. Now, if you, um, a sister that's a, a death doula, grief doula, um, Phoenix Rising, my chief of staff, if you need some help, she can either uh, counsel you or she can refer you to one of her students that's also a grief counselor. Okay. Another question. But what I gave you was the basics. That's that's the bare minimum that you can do to get through what you're going through. Okay. Give thanks. Give but the most important thing is only you can say how far along you are in your grief. Can't nobody outside you tell you because they can't feel what you're going through. Only you can feel it. That's your conversation with God. Right. And is it too early to have a altar? Because I, I really don't have, I have an altar for him. I've been having it, you know. Um, I didn't do it right away. I probably did it like a week afterwards. Is, is it too early for his altar or do I keep it up or? You set his altar up when you feel like it. Can't nobody. That's the same as with your grief. Can't nobody tell you. Okay. In China, when somebody died and they are Buddhist, they put their picture up the same day, so they cremate the body and everybody uses pictures, the photo shrine. So you have. That's how you feel. Can't nobody tell you. That's the key to breaking through spiritually. Is when it comes to spiritual matters, your perception and how you feel. It's the overriding determining factor in how you practice your spiritual development. Okay. Yeah, he got That's using your will and maintaining your self-control and your control over self. And that keeps other outside entities from stepping on your toes. Okay. And slowing you down. Okay. All right, Mr. Hayes. Yeah, at his altar, and he did, we did get him cremated. And I have, you know, I'm sitting right in front of it right now. <laughs> so I was like, was this, I seen you and I was like, okay, let me ask you. I usually don't ever join lives or your live, but I knew you had the answer for me. I'm glad I was able to help you, sweetie. Give thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Later. Bye. I do a lot of this. Thunder cast under that coming. What's going on? Let's see. What's going on? Man? It's my second time I'm talking up with you. I can call you a, a real I can call you a real reflection, man. You my elder, but you're you 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 still a reflection of me, man, every time I hear you. You know how that goes. <laughs> like mm -hmm. hearing you talk, you know what I mean? Hearing you talk <laughs> is like crazy, huh? 
So, what what you got on your mind um, today? You, you, you said something key key today. Hold on, let me. Hold on. You said something key just to the to the young lady here, um, and that was about how to explicitly transition, like um, using the override. You said there's some key overriding things, and that's what I'm on right now. The manifestation, whatever is going on. Like I got some situation going on, but as a master of how I master my mind, I, I'm demonstrating, and that's why I'm in the position I'm in now. Because I came back just to do what I'm doing, and I'm demonstrating to people, to my people, right, not to let the outside convolute your vision, your trajectory, like how you perceive things and how you feel about it. That's what really override things. And when you say that, I'm like, God damn, Rod always on, and you're always on beat. But that's what I do to override any situation, whatever it looks like. And as God, he's my little son, he, he tweaking right now. <laughs> sure. So so every everything I do, we do, we know how to override it. Check us out. Huh? We got about 20 seconds for instagram pick us out oh, okay okay now i was just so yeah i was just pointing that out to you man and, and and just hopping on i got my little son here but yeah the overriding things whatever's going on in our life um um i was touching on that with you when you said it so um as i'm going on with my situation and welcome 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 back to office hours with dr g welcome to all of you who are in the chat Make sure that you are sharing, 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 sharing the fact that Chief Pontiac is in the house. He's in the office. Um, he's going to give us um, just what the doctor ordered. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have you. It's so good to have you here, Chief. It's so good to have you here. And um, it's always good to be here, Dr. G. I know we have a ball though when we talk, um, when we have our conversations. Um, um, where do you find the link for part two? Part two's link is if you go back to the description of this particular show, like if you're on um, YouTube, YouTube, there's a description. It's telling you what the show is going to be about. There's a link and it tells you this is the link to the show. You click on that. What we're going to do is give you a break. What we're going to do is we're going to talk for about 45 minutes, maybe. Um, well, Actually, Chief's going to talk for about 45 minutes. We're going to share. And then um, about 20 after 8, we want, we're want we going to log off of this. And we want you to click the link and join us. It's going to look the same. But we want you to join us. And we're going to be in what we call unfiltered. And what that means is it's not going to be on Facebook. It's not going to be on YouTube. You're not even going to be able to get back to it if you, I mean, tomorrow. I mean, when it's over, you're not going to be able to see it. So you want to tell everybody, everybody you know that we're doing a two-parter. Um, you don't have to register. It's just that it's unfiltered. And um, we want to make sure that you just can't get back to it and throw it up on YouTube or something. We don't want it on YouTube because we want to be able to um, speak freely. And it's a, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad that we're at a place where we can't. Um, free speech is not free, and you have the uh, you run the risk of of uh, you know jeopardizing your channel, your platform when you tell the truth. But we gonna we found a way. We got to work around. So with that said, um, Chief, again, welcome to um, Office Hours. Welcome back to Office Hours. I mean, I I, I feel like you know when you have a um, this is Doctor G's Office Hours, and I feel like when you come on. Um, it's like I had to get a specialist to come, uh, you know what I mean? A doctor specialist to come in the office and, and give us the 411 of what's really, really going on. Cause you know, I didn't learn that stuff when I was in, <laughs> in the, in the, in the doctorate school. So I appreciate the time that you took, um, and that big mama took to put you in a place where you could have some real serious um, download time and, 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 you know, you, um, erudited yourself, you know, you were able to get that erudite scholarship and that knowledge. And it's very rare that I've ever seen you on anybody's platform that a question has been posed to you that you, that you can't respond to an answer. And, and what I love about you also is that when you can't, you say that, you don't try to pick, find something um, and, and, and give somebody a whole bunch of gobbledygook and some stuff to make it sound good. But I've heard you literally say um, from time to time that, you know, you're not familiar with 
you're not familiar with that. Um, I thought I had <laughs> myself. Um, yeah. I thought, you know, you 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 don't say that. But what you do know, you come right off the off the cuff with it. And I know and I feel and I like I think a lot of people will agree with me. Um, that knowledge and that wisdom that you have garnered over those in the belly of the beast was not for naught. And it, it's, it's been for our benefit. With that, um, like I said, welcome back to the show. Do you have anything in particular that's on your heart or in your mind? Because, you know, every day I know information and so forth is being transmitted to you. So I don't know whether there's anything before I get into asking you stuff. What's going on? Because it's a lot going on. But I want to know, I want your take on it. Just to start off now. Well, look, it's funny you said that because I'm 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 in my sense of humor mode, right? Okay. And somebody posted on my on Facebook today, it popped up in my timeline and say, This is the third of September. You ain't black if you don't know what that is. <laughs> it was that the, the day third I always remember that was the day, was the day <laughs> that my daddy, daddy died. died. <laughs> So the emphasis on the 3rd of September being the day that my daddy died is talking about <clears throat> patriarchy. Ah. Patriarchy. Okay. The revelation of truth is what killed the father who was a bootleg preacher. Okay. I mean, that he was making it up as he go, teaching what he think yeah. could get him some money. I ain't in here for no money. And I work for the pay, for the matriarchy. That's right, you do. So if I ain't here for money and I work for the matriarchy, then the patriarchy got to fall. That's right. right? Right? So in working for the matriarchy, a lot of the up and coming developing Men think that the death of patriarchy mean that all of their power took. They don't understand the matriarchy. The matriarchy is not about taking the men out of positions of power and just putting a woman there. They might be the most qualified for that position. You're going to leave them there under the matriarchy. The matriarchy's rules are a lot simpler and comprehensive for the regular people than the patriarchal admiralty rules, right? And the matriarchy is li live your best life, be your best self to experience heaven on earth. The patriarchy is dog eat dog, step on your brother to get what you want, right? It's two different ideologies as the root. Under the matriarchy, everybody in the tribes have a voice. And you send it up the chain of command. Under the patriarchy, the people that the patriarchy consider important, the only ones that matter and everybody else's voice must only be apparently heard. Meaning they give you the appearance that they hear you, but they do what they was going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So... In the matriarchy, a four-year-old can get legislation put on the on the vote. And under the patriarchy, if you're not a legislative writer, you can't get nothing put on the vote. The difference is the law is handled by a group of specialized women that know how to use source energy as the guiding light to make law according to the law of nature. So the first two questions that they ask before they consider if it's something that they should be contemplating making law about, they ask two questions. How does it affect the children? The reason they ask that question because the effect on the children tells you what effect it has in the future. And then the second question is, how does it affect the earth? If it affects either one of them negatively, it's rejected. You can't, it, it won't even benefit one if it don't benefit the other. Right? So this is the difference 
in the patriarchal dictators masquerading as democratic government having people believe they vote count when nothing they say count they just want to know who can organize the vote so they know who to pay off or murder and if you can um get you a group of people that they feel you can control then whatever you ask for they gonna compensate you in one form or another they normally give it to you in tax breaks and grants that's where 50c3 status is for the church 501c3 yeah it's a it's a waiver a financial um um penalty in the form of tax if you do what we want you to do they're not gonna give you access to exemptions if you're not gonna benefit their system but if you can figure out how to operate within a system to benefit the most people they want you and they will do anything they can to appease you from mobilizing those people to reclaim what's rightfully theirs so the, this is why they have us under the illusion of voters rights they already said we don't got no rights in their system so now we believe we got rights in their system and we fight over the rights that they never gonna give us and the only time you get a benefit is when you can sabotage the most people on their behalf the more people you can sabotage the more comfortable they let you live oppression is atmospheric there's two ways to the top rise up or suck up it's only two ways to the top and we got too many suck ups and not enough rise ups because when you rise up you know what you're doing or else you're not gonna leave your seat hmm. but when you suck up you don't know what you're doing because you don't understand why you can't get no power all suction and ain't getting no power right that's like a hollywood prostitute when she get old she still was a prostitute and she got nothing to show for it but probably a house and a car hmm. then she looked back and she's miserable with how she lived her life the whore babylon right so they use the political stage show to steer the psychological grouping or sociology of the collective if they can give you a compelling show they have your attention <clears throat> if they got your attention or uh, they you will follow them off the cliff yeah, like but the as soon as, yeah and as soon as you take your attention back they are offended at you because you're taking your power back Let's talk about power for a minute, or the the lack thereof, or the you know the the appearance of, or the mindset of there being no power. Can you can you tell tell us when we went from knowing that we were the that God you know we were the gods that God you know the scripture even if you go to the Bible if you there's a scripture that says the greater one lives on the inside and he was and, and yeshua was allegedly talking to the masses and saying you got the greater one you got him already you got him already on the inside of you so we see that there yet what has been espoused and taught and assimilated has been powerlessness and looking to government which we know allowing somebody else to take over control of one's mental faculties and to put thoughts and ideas ideologies and so forth and to control when did we go from knowing who we were who where where we came from to where we are now being completely you know in a like the twilight zone or brainwashed as if these things had never even been our story what what happened what transpired i guess i want to say 
Um, we okay. Sociology is the study of groups and how groups operate, how they move. This tells you what their trigger mechanisms is. It can tell you how to turn them on each other. It can tell you how to execute your divide and conquer strategies. The ones with the enough of the old ways will begin to remember pieces of it and they will do things that gather the attention away from the, the stage show. They use the same strategy as an illusionist in Vegas, a David Copperfield trick. They tell you that you don't have any rights because they declare war on you. But then they told you, you're not them people that we're talking about. We talk about these other people that we brought over here with us to replace you. But we ain't going to tell you that part. Rod Hayes just going to say the quiet part out loud so the people know how the game play. So they telling you, you from somewhere else, but your insides keep saying, hey, yeah, just something ain't right with that story. You don't know what it is because so many people that look like you believe the same narrative. But some of us don't. The hard part is for the ones who don't, to go find enough evidence to prove the case. We become then tribal investigators. And we trade the information by wind talking or cold talking. The ghetto code, did it that, did it that, did it dash, <laughs> tells us where we are. How much influence do we still have over our people versus the squatters that came? We always knew who we was, but most of us couldn't say it out loud without being penalized. The threat of death and punishment and torture made a lot of our people whisper it to only certain people in the family that they know can hold water. So they don't want us singing, call the plumber. It must be a leak in my drain because everybody seemed to know about my good thing. Right? So the plumber just so happened to be another clansman. When he get there, he going to tell you why you got a leak in your drain. But shh, don't you tell nobody. Hmm. So then they create comprehensive structures to slowly feed us back the information of who we are by telling us to watch how we operate. So then the government tricked the people into believing that the uh, righteous, rightful heirs of the land is the criminals. Because they came with the admiralty law and they denied us our right to enforce tribal law as a clan. Every tribal leader is responsible for keeping his clan under control and he used members of the clan to do it. By using um, a strategy called villainization, they systematically take parts of our culture, create a word that means something negative, and then they call us by the negative term on a, a wide spectrum broadcast like the news. Before that, it was the newspaper, the movie reels, the news reels. They making yeah. movies to tell us that we um, marijuana smoking, white girl raping and lunatics. The niggas. Right. But then when it coming to find out the ones who was smoking the herb was the was the kindest, peacefulest people. And then Paleface told us because they had something called the flower generation where they was learning all of this stuff from the tribal leaders. Many of them look like us. On why they using the herb. 
why they eating the mushroom. Right? But at the same time, they trying to tell us the government lied and here, come out here, hippie. Hippie is a tribal term from the people of the land describing something. Really? <laughs> so the hippie generation is known as the fly the flower child generation. It's the bridge between um the baby boomers and generation X. It's the flower child and free love generation. So how do you stop them from giving free love? You poison them with STDs. That's all chemical warfare, biological warfare. So you're saying that the introduction of the STDs was something that was, was well, it was it's introduced. Biological warfare. First you promote it, then you poison it. If it if it work, you poison it. When you say once you promote it, when you mean promote the free love and then put something in to make create, it, yeah. So you make it mainstream, and then you poison it because now you have to try to stop the people from reproducing in time enough to catch the one. That's going to figure out the problem. If too many babies is born, that's what they call scattering your shots. That's why it's more than one big mama on the land that got a baby boy that she sent out on a mission. We come from different tribes, but we all have a tribal responsibility as a tribal investigator to look at the problem. And when we don't know what the problem is, we tell the part we know, this is what I found out so far. And then we pass it to the next chief to, for him to look at it and do his investigation. And we use the music, the arts and the entertainment because that is the root to the culture. You don't have a culture if you don't have that stuff. And I don't care which generation you look back on the last hundred years. If you start at ragtime and you come to hip hop, it's us. James Brown was a chief. Chuck Berry was a chief. Lou Richard, Chief, uh, chief Screaming Hawk. Smokey Robinson, Hayoka High Chief. They putting codes in the music. The Temptations. Chiefs, they putting codes in the music. The, you got to know who writing this music. You got you got brothers is teaching others how to talk to us in the music. They called the music fixers in the fifties and sixties. They had to fix the music because the other people don't know our, the way we use music, so they can't promote the culture we give them until we show them how to fix the music and the music so we, is the i was going to say can you take that all the way back to the so-called days of slavery when you know the songs that were being sung that were actually now they became incorporated into the spiritual at spiritual religious songs but they were actually messages that were being being um broadcast or or things that were being talked about that what were not openly spoken of for you know like um uh, even uh, when we talk about so-called ets and so forth swing down chariot stop and let me ride you know in the church uh you know is saying you know rock me lord in, in the bosom of abraham but what are we, we know of chariots of fire the chariots of the so-called gods so were our ancestors connecting or were they they knew that there were there were star sky people and they were saying come get me look take me out whatever they were sharecropping and they were stuck in these situations that they wanted to be you know relieved from was that what was going on or the earth tribes no matter what part of the land they are all gonna look to the americas for the next wave of cultural phenomena Biblically, they call us the salt of the earth because we are the progenitors 
of the music, of the art, of the acting, of the singing, of the dancing, right? We are the progenitors of that. So when a, if you if you go back to Muhammad, and the Hadith say Muhammad um, was having a celebration, and he put the celebration on hold to say, where's the ones with the duffs? That's the drum. If you look at Shaka Zulu, when he leaves the shaman getting his sword made, when he about to be um, promoted, he had a feast for him, and they played the bongos, the drums. Right? If you go to Nelson Mandela and Stephen Biko in the apartheid era, they talking in the music. If you go to uh, Franz Fanon, he said, where are the days when the mothers sung the songs of liberation into the ears of the babes to stand up and oust the enemy? So it's always been our cultural um, development that influences music, but we always code music. You code it with the 808. That's the war drum. We are in a state of war. Hip hop is telling you that with the 808. So the 808 is the root chakra pound to get you active and moving in order to find out why you stuck in your lower self. Once you understand what the codes in the music, all of the notes is telling you a story. Right? The A tone is the A minor. A minor is a certain pitch in the music. But it's a homonym for what them people doing wrong. They not like us. <laughs> they not like us. Right? All right. So then you go from your minors to your flats, your B's, your C's, your D's. Those are your grades that the frequency come in on. And the frequency is played out in the note. What is a note? It's a short letter. Mm. Okay. So the note is going to tell you what the pitch is. The pitcher is the sender. He's the one on the pitcher's mound about to try to strike somebody out. Once you know what the pitch is, is it a curveball? Is it a slider, a fastball, a slow ball? Right? What's the pitch? If you don't know what the catcher flipped as the code to the pitcher, then you won't never know what the pitch is. So now you have to know what the catcher, the catcher is covering what? Home plate. That means the home base is being covered by the one who's flipping the code to the one at the pitcher's mound. Hmm. Right? So the pitcher is determining the pitch based on the frequency that comes from home. Your home training. Mama, your first teacher. Your first nurse, right? She's teaching you the art and science of loving home and family first. So when you become an adult as a chief, you say that whatever I do with myself, it's going to benefit home and family first, which takes us to a first family flip which is a royal art degree because only from the royal house will you get the red blue arc and the arc is the covenant and the covenant is the rainbow and the rainbow is being perverted by the society in order to create a aversion to the rightful layer of the colors in the spectrum Every note in music has a color assigned to the note. Right. So now you got colors, 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 colors. I'm a nightmare walking, psychopath talking. King of a jungle, just a gangster stalking. That's an ice 
T flip and Ice T is flipping from Long Island. Long the strong island. island, right? Mm -hmm. The strong island. The strong island is where Rakim from. The black guy, cold flipper, high chief, 5% nation, right? They, they, say I, they say I was locked in jail, so now I guess I'm out on bail. But the only island I was on was the strong one. And if I did a bit, it'd be a long one. Right, so he's flipping the code back to the other island. So now we got an island knock off an island knock. So Bell Isle is in Detroit, right? And Detroit is where Chief Pontiac had to fight the French at River Rouge when they turned the water red, and the blood was up to the horse's bridle, which was the blood in the water which takes us to Chicago and the Democratic National Convention. All this is just tying the music to the culture, to the politics. Wow. That's called a zigzag flip. Because in, in the um, DNC, they dyed the Chicago River red, which turned it from the Chicago River to the Rouge River. Because Chicago is supposed to be founded by a French named uh, du Sable, Jean Baptiste Du Sable. Okay, but it wasn't because before they changed the name to Chicago, it was an old tribal metropolis called Chata. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So they want us to believe that this was an uninhabited land, but we have castles all over the land. They just turned them into prisons and state buildings. In and order to asylum. open your path. And asylums. Yep, yeah. yeah. mental hospitals. Yeah. So they yeah. they telling you what they're gonna do with you. They're gonna either govern you with their politics or they're gonna house you in your castle as a prison. Or they're gonna drive you crazy trying to collect your birthright if you don't remember the old ways. Wow. While you were talking about the um, the colors and the and the and the notes and all that, it made me I I jumped off for a minute because I wanted to go. You know, I, I guess you know one of the things I do um, is working with energy, and one of the things we have um, is when we're doing an energy assessment of someone, um, frequency wise, you could determine what color or colors are prominent in someone's life, whether the colors are negatively influencing them um, or positive, what frequencies, what note is pitched too high or what might be too low and what's balanced. So we end up giving the client tones that balance what comes up in their assessment. But we also give them colors that would give them certain outcomes. So, you know, a lot, these are a lot of the things that we don't get the benefit of you know this is technology that's old and ancient but withheld from the masses so that those you know so-called you know in the no elites can take the benefit of that because you might be looking at you know purple and purple might be setting you off for instance and it you know you might be like well, so what we what we end up doing and I, I went and pulled my thing. What we end up doing is we have we have glasses, and so today I need to look at if I need to look at 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 um, at things through like say rose colored glasses. I can put the color lens on that I need to balance. It might be my chakras might be off, or it may be some energetic issue with me. But a lot of times, I mean, even though because you know we were going to talk in this part about some metaphysical stuff. So a lot of times, like I said, or it might say in order for me to get what it is I need, I may need to have um, orange. I need to be need to be focusing on orange. I can change my lenses and change my perspective and change the energy in my body. So a lot of times, you know, the certain um, colors that they put on us and the tones that they put on us are affecting us, our body, our mental, our even our physiology, colors and and frequency 
And we, I, I learned that, you know, with what I've been doing with AO scan for a while, but this is something that's ancient and old that our people knew. I'm pretty sure there were certain tones or certain colors and so forth that they knew to stay away from, or they knew to maybe embrace at a certain time. And it can change. It may be you need the purple today, but tomorrow you need to be looking at yellow or green. And it's kind of hard to do that because this kind of knowledge where it may have been widespread back with our, in our earlier ancient days, they took all that away from us. Yeah. Like biorhythms, um, yeah. your biorhythms can be electronically read because they have machines calibrated to your biorhythm mm -hmm. and each one of your biorhythms is assigned a color. The same with moves, right? Remember the mood ring? When oh, your yeah. mood change, the color change? Right. right, because they all have a a energy signature. Some stones, like the one they make the real moon rings out of, not these fake ones that they use paper that's designed to do what the stone do. But the real stone, people would carry them around to monitor their own mood so that mm -hmm. they can try to maintain a certain frequency right, right and then they turned them into a novelty exploiting our culture because we naturally drawn to things that's from our old cultures they find ways to give us a, a mimic an artificial mm -hmm. replica of it and then our genetic memory will be drawn to it it's the same right. with the bible that's why the bible is rewritten and scrambled up to confuse us because the genetic memory remembers the holy drama. Everybody, everybody that's earthborn, the story of Osiris and Isis has a different story around the world, but it's the same stories called the holy drama. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's the story of the uh father. Fall into 